Hello! Welcome to Stitchbox Stories. I'm Michelle and in this video I'm going to be sharing how I made this puffy vest. So the pattern is self-drafted and I used this puffy vest from Costco that fits me pretty well as a guide. Here's everything laid out. And these are the pattern pieces that I ended up with. Any piece that is neon needs an additional piece cut in the insulation layer and any piece that has the dotted line needs two of the exact same pieces in order to quilt the insulation layer to the fabric. Even though I included seam allowance in all of my pattern pieces, I added roughly an extra half inch around each pattern piece when cutting out the fabric. This is because when I go to quilt the fabric with the insulation, the layers might shift making it very difficult to work with. By cutting the fabric a little bit larger than the pattern, I can always trim it after quilting. I used the Primalove Gold 3 oz synthetic insulation and for this I didn't add the extra half inch when cutting the piece out. It actually doesn't need to look that neat because it'll be on the inside. So once all my pieces were cut, I took a fabric pencil to create a guide for where I want to quilt the fabric. And I decided I didn't like the placement of the first line so here I am moving it over a quarter of an inch. You can really quilt the garment however you want, but I went with one and a half inches apart on all the side pieces and two inches apart on the center front and center back pieces. This way I don't really have to worry about lining up all the stitches when sewing the side pieces to the center pieces. Plus I think varying the distance between the lines gives the whole garment a lot more character. Next, I created a seam which with the inner fabric, the insulation layer, and then the outer fabric. Just like that. To hold everything together, I used this 505 temporary adhesive spray, lightly spraying it in between each layer. And then for extra security, I used these wonder clips and clipped everything together. Just wanted to prevent the layers from sliding as much as possible. And finally, I was ready to sew. To quilt, I changed my presser foot to a walking foot and just sewed along all the lines that I drew earlier. Yep, every single one of them. <laughs> At least there's no need to back stitch. I know this seems like a lot of work, but it goes by pretty fast and it's sort of therapeutic. And with the piece fully quilted, I trimmed it to now perfectly match with the pattern piece. And with that, this one piece is complete and ready to be sewn. To create the center back piece, I used the exact same process, except I quilted two inches apart instead of an inch and a half apart. And for the finish, I decided to go with the French seam because I think it just looks cleaner and more professional on this project than a serger does. To do this, I first sew the wrong side together with a quarter inch seam allowance, trim the edge of the fabric, and then flip the garment over to sew the right side together, again with a quarter inch seam allowance. So in total, I'm sewing with a half inch seam allowance. I know that was very wordy, but there are a ton of video tutorials on how to sew a French seam, and it's actually pretty simple. So here I'm sewing the second time around with the right sides of the fabric facing each other. Then I pushed the seam towards the center back and top stitched on the right side of the fabric about a sixteenth of an inch from the seam. This is what the back panel looked like when it was fully constructed. There's a super clean top stitch on the right side and here's the French seam on the wrong side. With the back side done, I started assembling the front side in the same manner, quilting one and a half inches apart on the side pieces and two inches apart on the center pieces. And then it was time to install the zipper pocket. So here I draw guidelines for where I want to install the zipper. This first line is an inch from the edge, the second line is 3 8 inches from the first line. And then I'm taking the markings from the side piece and matching those points to the lines I drew on the pocket. For the side piece, I just drew a half inch from the edge for the seam allowance and then 5.5 inches apart for the length of the zipper. And once I had everything neatly pinned together, I followed the markings to sew a box all the way around. So you can see that I sewed right through all the layers, which consisted of the pocket and the entire side piece. Once the box was sewn, I cut an opening starting from the triangle on one end. I used an X-Acto knife to make the initial cut, then switched to some sharp scissors. 
Then I cut right down through the center and then the triangle on the other end, making sure not to cut through the stitches. Next, I sewed a top stitch on each side of the box. I know this part is getting a little bit confusing, so I'm going to link the video tutorial that I followed to make the zipper pocket. With the top stitch done, I pushed the pocket through, creating this nice hole for the zipper to go into. And I just added the simple zipper tab to the end of my zipper. Then I pinned the zipper in place. And this is what it looked like after sewing it in. Okay, so when assembling the front panels together, I used the same French seam technique that I used for the back panels, but this time I had to be really careful to not sew in the way of the zipper. So here I am first sewing the wrong sides together. And I really should brush my hair once in a while. Anyways, then I trimmed the edge, cutting pretty close to the stitches. Then again, I flipped the garment to be right sides together and sewed a quarter inch all the way down. And just like I did in the back panel, I pushed the seam towards the center front and top stitch a sixteenth of an inch from the seam. I forgot to film the part where I sewed the actual pocket shut, but basically this is what the pocket looks like from the inside. I just sewed around the rectangle and then finished the edges with a knit bias tape. I didn't worry about the bottom side because it would be covered when I hemmed the bottom of the vest. I also hand sewed a few tack down stitches on the corners of the pockets to prevent them from flopping forward. And here's one side of the front completed. I then repeated all the same steps on the other side. Okay, the vest is really starting to come together here. To start sewing the front and back panels together, I started by sewing the side pieces, again using the French seam technique here. The only difference is that I didn't do a top stitch, but I kind of wish that I did because it helped keep the seam nice and flat. And for the last French seam of the project, I sewed the front and back together at the shoulders. Moving on to the collar, I didn't bother cutting out the fabric larger than the pattern because I'm only going to quilt one line. Also, I'm only quilting one fabric piece to the insulation, not creating a sandwich like before. To make this easier, I kept the scrim layer on the insulation to prevent it from falling apart when I went to sew it. Super simple, just like this, I sewed one straight line all the way through. To attach the collar to the vest, I first marked the center point on the collar and matched it to the center point on the vest. And then I just pinned the two right sides together with the collar piece on the outer edge. Since we're done with the French seams, I just sewed the regular half inch seam allowance all the way through. This is what it looked like from the inside once sewn. I then took the second collar piece that doesn't have the insulation layer and pinned it right sides together to the collar that I just attached to the vest. And then same thing, just sewed with the half inch seam allowance all the way through. And when I fold the collar over, this is what it looked like. The collar was hanging off a little bit over the edge, so I just went ahead and trimmed it. So at this point, I put aside the collar because I'm actually installing the zipper next. To do this, I took a long strip of fabric and folded it in half right sides together. This is going to be the zipper facing. I wanted the zipper facing to start a little bit above the bottom of the zipper, so I just made a mark for where the zipper ends and where I wanted the facing to end. On the top side of the zipper, I drew this curve as a guide for where to sew. And then I sewed along that curve as well as along the mark I made on the bottom of the facing. Once that was sewn, I just trimmed the fabric close to the stitches. So here's the curve at the top, and then just a straight stitch at the bottom. Then I flipped the strip of fabric right side out. To keep the facing nice and flat, I sewed a few straight stitches all the way down the fabric. I ended up sewing three lines all a quarter inch apart. Attaching the facing is pretty simple. I used this washable double-sided tape to base the zipper to the facing. I taped the wrong side of the zipper to the right side of the facing and added an additional basting stitch to keep everything together. And then the zipper can be sewn on like a regular jacket zipper. I didn't do a good job showing this step, so I'll add a link to a video that shows how to sew a zipper with the facing. Also, I didn't pin the zipper flush to the edge of the center front piece of the vest. I actually pinned it a half inch back because I wanted to use the extra fabric to fold over and sew down to the zipper edge for a clean finish. You can also see here at the top of the zipper, I folded over the part of the zipper facing that had that curved edge sewn. 
I realized later that I didn't make this flap big enough, so you want to make sure that this little zipper garage is large enough to fit the zipper pull. Here's the best with one zipper sewn in. Before pinning the other side, I zipped up the zipper and marked where the quilting lines are because I wanted to make sure that they align when both zippers are sewn in. So I flipped the jacket inside out and made the markings on the wrong side of the zipper. And repeating the steps from the other side, I pinned the zipper with the right side facing down. And again, I left an extra half inch of space from the edge of the zipper to the edge of the fabric. To make sure the zipper laid nice and flat, I top stitched all the way along the zipper. And to finish off the inside of the zipper, I folded over that extra fabric two times and sewed it directly to the zipper only. And with the zipper completed, it was time to finish the collar. I cut off some of the insulation on the ends of the collar so that it would be easier to fold over. And then I folded over any of the raw edges, then folded everything over once more and finally pinned the collar in place. I then stitch along the side of the collar, then all the way across and up the other side. And this is how it looked like from the front. To hem the bottom of the jacket, I actually just folded over the ends and sewed right along the bottom edge first, and then I went back, folded over that raw edge and sewed a second line to finish the hem. Not gonna lie, this took me a few attempts to get right because of all the layers, but eventually with a lot of patience and occasionally hand cranking my machine, I was able to finish the hem. Also, I didn't like how the hem was in parallel to the last line of quilting on the side pieces, so I just carefully seam ripped them out. And for the very final step, I finished the armholes using this knit bias tape. This bias tape was super easy to work with. I got it from a local Etsy seller, and I'll definitely add the link along with all the other materials I used to make this vest. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to ask any questions or share techniques you might have done differently. I'm going to add a bunch of links in the description showing in more detail some of the techniques I used because I know I moved through the video pretty fast. Anyways, make sure to like the video if you learned something new and subscribe to see future content. Bye!